Hello, friends. Despite the vast historical experience, we still haven't fully learned how to control the complex chemical process of combustion. And today I'll tell you about the extinguishing of one of the most complicated fires in the oil and gas industry, which could only be stopped by a nuclear explosion. It all started on December 1, 1961 in Uzbek, SSR, or current Uzbekistan. A well was being drilled at Erdebulik. The drill got into formation with abnormally high pressure of 300 atmospheres and high hydrogen sulfide content. Further errors, such as the use of inappropriate equipment, caused the drill string to get pushed out of the well, allowing a powerful gas fountain to burst out. According to some information, the fountain ignited on its own, while other sources suggest that it was set on fire using the existing technology so as to avoid hydrogen sulfide poisoning of every living creature nearby. Specialists were sure that the fire would help neutralize the harmful substances and the flame would be extinguished quickly and easily. But it didn't go as planned. In a short period of time, the protective fixtures of the wellhead got destroyed and the fire grew bigger. Its height was 70 to 120 meters, according to different data. That is, it was almost as high as a 40-story building. It's incredible, but 10 to 12 millions of cubic meters of gas were burned daily. Taking the average price of gas in Russia, which is about 6 rubles per cubic meter at the moment, and the current exchange rate, we get that a minimum of 60 million rubles worth of blue fuel was burning each day. Taking into account that it all lasted for about three years, we get billions of rubles. Because of the very high flame temperature, it was impossible to come closer than 250 meters. At first, the firefighters tried to cool down the wellhead zone and flooded it with water from fire monitors, but all they managed to achieve was raising the flame by 10 meters over the well. Another problem was caused by preventers, which ironically were supposed to seal the wellhead but side flames burst out of them, preventing the firefighters from approaching the well. A decision was made to get the artillery involved and use direct fire to shoot down the preventers. It then became possible to install the equipment that diverted some of the gas away from the wellhead, but created new smaller fountains, which were also set on fire to prevent air poisoning. It seemed that the situation was getting better but the pressure of the gas bursting out from under the ground increased, causing boils, sudden breakthroughs of hydrogen sulfide to the surface through the permeable formations. The situation was getting out of control. The area around the well was covered with soot, and even the behavior of the animals living in the vicinity of the well has changed. Kamil Mangushev, head of the extinguishing works, gave a very vivid description of what was happening at the field. There was a strange feeling when the helicopter touched the ground. The vibration intensified. The engine noise sank in the never-ending sounds of deafening explosions, the roar of hundreds of jet engines, the noise of cannonades. All of these made up its voice, the voice of the fire. The fountain was about 600 meters away from here. The distant part of the valley was all hazy with ghostly canopies swaying near the torch. What seemed like a small ashtray from above turned out to be a shaft of sand loaded as close to the wellhead as the bulldozers were able to reach during winter. The torch inclined here and went into the sky where it got lost somewhere in the haze. Everything that could burn around it had burned down long ago. Now it really was just red hot, dead ground. No life could survive here anymore. Flocks of migratory birds and hordes of insects got attracted by the light at night and got into this fiery dance of death, falling down and getting burned, often even before reaching the ground. So how did people even manage to work there? How courageous does one need to be to even come close to this hellhole, you might want to ask? It's true, one needs to be very brave and physically strong to approach the wellhead and be able to do any kind of work there. It was the drillers who worked over there. It was them who pulled the equipment out of there and it was them who cleared the wellheads. Incredible. The fire had been going on for over two years. All methods of extinguishing a gas fountain known at the time had been tried. Something had to be done, but nobody knew what could be it exactly. It was then that the last possible option was suggested, underground detonation of a thermonuclear charge. Since the country's leadership had no real choice, the idea was approved. 
and KB-11 was commissioned to create the explosive, as they were already developing an industrial explosive for the Chagan project. A very interesting project, but also insane as I see it. The Soviet scientists had an idea to use the nuclear explosion craters as water reservoirs in the Soviet Union. These reservoirs would accumulate spring runoff, while the little evaporation mirror and the melted bottom would allow to save water for irrigation and cattle breeding needs. Lake Chagan in Kazakhstan was formed by a nuclear explosion, but that's a completely different story. Let's get back to the gas field. Since the explosion was necessary to handle the emergency situation, all the works were carried out at the highest possible speed. The sooner the torch was extinguished, the less gas would be lost to burnout. Despite all of this, a thorough geological preparation was carried out. It was done in extreme conditions when the temperature reached 40 to 50 degrees Celsius in the shade. In order to lay the charge, an inclined adit was drilled, in which the charge was placed at a depth of 1.5 thousand meters below the surface. The decision on the explosion date was approved at a meeting of the Politburo of the CPSU Central Committee, which was led by Brezhnev himself. On September 30, 1966, a nuclear charge of 30 kilotons was detonated. It was an underground impulse that shook our camera. Two, one, zero. For comparison, the yield of the nuclear bomb explosion in Nagasaki was 21 kilotons. As it turned out, it was worth it. The blazing gas fountain died out in 22 seconds. The well was pinched by layers of rock. This solution was found to be successful and nuclear charges were used to extinguish similar fires three more times. 1,074 days were spent extinguishing the gas torch at the Erda Bullock gas field. That's it, friends. I hope you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Bye.